Ohio could have a new way of drawing state legislative maps. Republicans and Democrats have worked out a compromise that changes the way state, House, and Senate districts are laid out. Right now, they heavily favor one party or the other. Republicans have the advantage because they drew these lines five years ago. The problem is the districts are very safe for one party or the other because the candidates don't face a threat from the other party. Those holders of those seats are more worried than about pleasing the fringe of their own parties. That leads to reluctance to compromise and divided government. To fix that, the new plan tries to force lawmakers to approve competitive districts. Here is the deal. It creates that seven-member bipartisan commission made up of elected leaders. Approval of the map requires two minority party votes. If they fail once, it goes into effect. The majority map goes into effect for four years. A second failure, the majority's map goes into effect for six years. This whole plan still needs voter approval because it's a constitutional amendment. Joe Ingalls, the headlines called this a historic deal. What's the big deal about it? Well, it is a big deal because for as long as I've been covering politics, uh, they have been discussing reworking the redistricting of legislative and congressional lines. Now, this doesn't affect congressional lines. Um, there's a federal court case out in Arizona, um, and, and everyone uh, at the State House is kind of laying back on that to see how that turns out. But this does affect the uh, legislative lines. And, um, you know, a lot of people are really excited because this has widespread bipartisan support. And I think it's seen as enough of a change that it's a step forward. I hear a lot of people say, hey, it's not perfect. We would have changed this or that. But they're happy with the fact that it's moving forward now. Sam, you've been pushing for this for years. Um, will this deal stop the hyper-partisanship of the State House? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't guarantee you that, but it has taken eight years of my life, so I'm happy to see it. Um, it is significant to this point, and there's a phrase, favor or disfavor, an individual or party. That is the language that we accepted because it is not, you know, competitive districts, but it is competitive districts depending how you, you see it. Um, the congressional piece not being there, um, we wish we could have done more, but we understand the case. But from the standpoint of common cause, uh, we are happy with this progress. And let us see the first version of the uh, map that is produced as a result of this process. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll see from there. That's in 2020. Well, this is the first mm -hmm. time we'll see that. Mm -hmm. After the 2020 census, anyway. Mark, is this, is this a step in the right direction? Is this enough, a big enough step to stop the, uh, the gerrymandering of districts? Well, we'll see when they produce a map, but it does seem like it's taking significant steps toward that. I mean, just having the minority party, you know, be included in the process instead of a sort of a winner-take-all system that we had before, I think is a big step. And there's specific language in the um, um, uh, proposal they're putting out that would address things about how districts are formulated to try and get more equal representation and address some of the problems that we've seen with gerrymandering in terms of how the districts are constituted. So it's more than just requiring Democrats agree to it. There are some, there are some requirements in there that, oh, yeah. that force oh, people yeah. to do oh, stuff. Yeah. Language, but now how the court interprets that, we'll see. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've been covering it even longer than Joe. I was here earlier, and I've yeah. never seen uh, redistricting actually passed by both houses. I used to joke that they would have one house pass it, and then the other house would hold it up, and it was sort of a game that they were played for decades. So Democrats finally, and Republicans. Democrats and Republicans. Yeah. Well, I mean, the Democrats actually had an opportunity a few years ago yeah. to do this, and, and they, they blew it, frankly. They just blew it. Um, but this requirement of the minority party getting two votes is critical to the success of this situation mm -hmm. because, you know, right now the Republicans hold all the cards. I'm actually kind of surprised the Republicans even agreed to this. Well, let me run the scenario by you, Sam. In 2021, when they're drawing the map, the Republicans say, you know what, we want our map the way we want it. And we're going to not worry about the two minority votes. So that map goes into effect for four years. So they redraw it again after four years, and then we still don't want the Democrats supporting this map. So that goes into effect for six years. Well, before, they, before they do all that, we're going to be in court. Okay. And we're going to try and figure this mess out. Mm -hmm. Because the phrase favor or disfavor, mm -hmm is an important phrase for us because we accept that. Now, how the court interprets that is still another thing, but that was an important phrase for us to accept. So you phrase. think you have, if, if, there is, if there is stonewalling or 
roadblocks the courts can step in and, and change right. and force a force a compromise force a compromise and again that phrase mm -hmm. uh favor or disfavor is very important to us voters this goes this is now in the hands of the voters right. yep. are they going to vote yes on this they love redistricting questions <laughs> on the <floor>. <laughs> <laughs> they don't understand them <laughs> that the campaign time. commercials yeah. to support <laughs> this issue <laughs> and yeah. but I, I think it is significant that that they got a deal and i think voters might even you know uh, recognize that and i thought it was telling because at the time they were negotiating this congress was uh, messing around with a proposal to keep the government open. So here we had yeah. some actual bipartisan action at the state level, and you know it, I think that's a good thing. I think the odds are it will pass because <laughs> it's probably going to get the support of all the good government groups like Common Cause and League of Women Voters and other organizations like that, and I suspect it will sweep the newspaper endorsements. Anybody going so, to oppose it? Any yes. groups out there that might oppose it? The libertarians. Yeah. <laughs> I think the libertarians yeah. may oppose it, and they may even try a court case. And I think something to remember here is is that Common Cause and some other good government groups right after the election went through and looked at the map and looked at who was predisposed to win what. And then they looked at the actual outcomes in 2014. And it showed that voters very had very little to do with it. Mm -hmm. um, whoever the map was supposed to help, that's, that's the party that got that, that position. All right.